Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, let's try to understand what is the meaning of brachial plexus injury which causes loss of function of the entire upper limb. But before I begin the topic, let me just tell you one thing. It is absolutely okay for you not to know about the brachial plexus injury or its management but please understand that it is absolutely not the way it is shown in Bollywood movies. For example, take a look at the scene from the movie Mossam, where Shahid Kapoor has brachial plexus injury on the left side and is unable to move his left hand. Let's see what happens. Please, don't do this, please. <laughs> no, don't do this, please. This is not how it is. All of a sudden, power became absolutely normal. This is just rubbish. This thing doesn't happen in reality and it actually instills a lot of false hopes in the patients of brachial plexus injury. So, before understanding about brachial plexus injury, obviously you need to know what is the meaning of brachial plexus. So as you know, there are multiple nerve roots exiting from the spinal cord at each level. We label them as for example C1, C2, C3, C4, C5 based on the level from which they exit. Similarly, it continues in the thoracic, in the lumbar and the sacral region. In the cervical region and upper thoracic, once these nerve roots come out of the spinal cord, they form multiple connections with the adjacent nerve roots and form what is called as brachial plexus. To be specific, these are the connections. Now, these roots connect together and form the trunks, while these trunks divide and give rise to divisions and multiple divisions combine with one another and form what is called as chords. So basically we have three chords, lateral chord, medial chord and posterior chord. And these are the nerves arising from these chords. So basically the nerves responsible for all the functions of the upper limb arise from the brachial plexus. So if the patient has brachial plexus injury, he will have loss of function in the upper limb. It could be a complete loss of function in case of a complete brachial plexus injury or it could be loss of a few selected movements in case of partial brachial plexus injury. 
Some of the common causes of brachial plexus injury are road traffic accidents where usually a two-wheeler rider falls on the ground and when he falls basically on his shoulder there is increase in this angle. So as this angle increases there is stretching of the upper trunk. As a result he ends up having a brachial plexus injury most commonly what is called as Erb's palsy. While another injury which causes a similar Erb's palsy is the injury which occurs to a baby during delivery. That is during delivery of a baby if the head of the baby is pulled out of the birth canal there is again increase in this angle and the child can have brachial plexus injury. While the other common mechanism includes when a person is falling down from height and if he gets some support in between to cling on to, obviously he'll try to hold that object while his entire body tries to move downwards. As a result, there is increase in this angle leading to brachial plexus injury. Most of the time, the component that gets injured is the lower trunk in this kind of injuries. Well, of course, there are multiple other ways how brachial plexus injury can happen. If the brachial plexus injury is complete, then the patient will have complete loss of all the movements of his upper limb along with loss of sensations. Or if the injury is partial, that is partial brachial plexus injury, the most common being Erb's palsy, patient will have a weakness of this movement of the shoulder called as abduction and this movement of the elbow that is flexion while this movement that is extension of the elbow done by the triceps is preserved to some extent and movements of the fingers are also preserved to some extent when it comes to nerve injury we have this classification in this neuropraxia is usually completely reversible while the others may not be. But in reality, when there is a nerve injury, the different fibers in them may undergo different type of injury. So if a patient has brachial plexus injury, what next? In very rare scenarios where a patient has brachial plexus injury because of a sharp cutting wound or in case of brachial plexus injury during operation done around this region for some other reason, uh, we intervene immediately and try to rejoin the nerve called as anastomosing the nerves. But this is a very rare scenario. While most of the time brachial plexus injury is because of blunt trauma around this region. So in case of a blunt trauma around this region causing brachial plexus injury, we usually do not intervene in the beginning. The reason being, as I told previously, there may be some nerve injury components which may reverse back on their own. So initially, we give sufficient time to the nerve fibers to recover on their own. Of course, along with giving the patient good physiotherapy and rehabilitation therapy. There are two common types of surgical intervention. One is relatively less commonly done, that is called as neurolysis. We do this only if there are some good signal carrying capacity in the affected nerve. Basically what we do is we clear off the scar tissue from the nerve and allow it to function smoothly. While the most commonly done operation is called as neurotization. Let's try to understand what neurotization is in brief. I will not go into the details of the operation. I will just tell about the concept of neurotization. Here in neurotization, what we do is in case if there is a fully functional or partially functional nerve with at least 50 to 60% of its functional capacity, we remove one or two fibers from these nerves and connect it to the affected nerve with the hope that there is transfer of signals from these functional nerves to the affected nerves which otherwise do not carry any signals. Functions which are usually attempted to be restored by this neurotization operation are abduction of the shoulder 
which is uh, done by these muscles supplied by these nerves and flexion of the elbow done by these muscles and these nerves here the most important thing is that the patient and his relatives understand the reality and have only practical expectations from the operation that is even with the best of hands the chances of recovery is up to about 40 to 50 percent of the patients that to over six months to two years unlike what is shown in bollywood where it happens immediately and even the recovery that happens is not 100 percent that is somewhere around 50 to 60 percent of its functional capacity so irrespective of how nicely the operation has been done the patient will not be able to have a hundred percent functional limb after brachial plexus injury so it is never possible to make that kind of stunt after brachial plexus injury so when to do this neurotization as i told previously we usually wait for about three months and we do not intervene within those three months so after three months depending on how his nerve recovery occurs we may consider intervening the ideal time to intervene would be within nine months and there is no use operating beyond two years for late injuries there is another operation which has been tried by the plastic surgeons this is called as tendon transfer where basically a functional muscle is also made to share the work of a non-functional muscle which has become non-functional because of the nerve damage another problem that these brachial plexus injury patients often face is severe pain along the upper limb that is neuralgia which can sometimes be resistant to any kind of medical management well if this pain is severe sometimes an operative procedure may have to be considered that is called as dresotomy which stands for this so i hope you found this video informative and uh, i hope you do not have unrealistic expectations because of these bollywood movies which actually make a mockery of medical conditions uh, in case if you like this video make sure you give it a thumbs up share it with your friends and family and for more health and wellness related videos subscribe to this channel thank you for watching